Have you seen what your father sent to Paul? This is despicable. My father was never a gentleman, but this crosses the line. I knew that father wasn't fond of Paul, but this... This is just awful. If only he could have seen how good Paul he is to me. I'm afraid I can't add anything useful. I'm afraid I can't add anything useful. I'm afraid I can't add anything useful. Are you aware that Paul smuggles drugs for a dangerous gang? Mr. Holmes, I've already told you. I call him a pirate in play. He's not an actual pirate. He's a champion and a brave gentleman, not a thug. Let us agree to disagree on that. But don't be surprised if one of his clients knocks on your door. It's chilling to think the monster is free.
Your fellow mariners have a strange way of showing hospitality. They were not my friends. Are you sure? I would rather risk my neck for someone who's at least honest and thankful. Perhaps then don't enter someone's life and be so judgmental, pretending you're better than they are. Then give me your perspective and allow me to see through your eyes. What were you doing this morning, Miss Perks? Don't call me that. I'm a champion. I was sailing. The other club members told me that you missed the race this morning. Do champions not need to practice? Ugh, you've talked with them already. No, I wasn't racing. I visited the doctor after that attack on me. And then I had to honor the deal with the bandits you just took care of. I tried to tell you before, but your partners interrupted. Have you heard the news? Theodore Gildon is dead. Do you have anything to say? Well, what a shock. To me, he was an angry old ogre. Good riddance. Was it Goliath that killed him? Did it crush him? Break his bones? Come on, tell me. I want all the details. You have an unusual way of showing grief. Imogen wouldn't appreciate that. But yes, the animal could have been involved. It's poetic in a way, isn't it? It takes a beast to kill a monster. I wish I could have been that elephant. You're asking for trouble with this smuggling business. You'd better leave it before they smuggle you out in a barrel. Don't patronize me. I've only ever had trouble with law-abiding citizens like Gildan and you. Never bandits. So ask me anything you want, and then get out of my sight. You smuggle illicit psychotropes on your yacht. Not a delivery for the hospital, I'm sure. Of course not. I've had to cut corners to earn some money. How might a person afford to pay for a yacht in an honest way? I don't know, although I'm smart. The buyers are my customers. Adults who are willing to pay for their pleasure, or weapons for jewels. Whatever they want me to deliver. Nothing criminal. Well, it's your lucky day. I'm not here because of smuggling. Have you tasted this tea yourself? I wouldn't have been a champion if I had used it. It's just a side business that keeps my career afloat. It's quite expensive to compete in yachting. Sometimes I cut corners. Such as fixing Whirlpool yourself? Exactly. And sometimes I just have to pay. That's how I earn money. I don't sell slaves or take the last mangir from a poor family. It seems as though Theodore Gildon hung a sword of Damocles over your life and career. Were these only words, or something more serious? Pfft. Check my forearm. Pulled muscles and bruises. Small cuts. Nothing that you could call serious. I doubt that a man in his late fifties could wrestle you. It wasn't him. He behaved like a rat and hired brutes. His boys tried to lock my hands behind my back, but I was faster and I escaped. Was he so protective of his daughter, or was it your feminine secret that provoked him? My guess is that he was protecting his property. As he saw it, he owned Imogen, and he treated her like a piece of furniture. He didn't want his daughter to be loved by anyone. What's more painful is that Theodore didn't allow me to love his daughter. Typical. I'm not sure that your relationship with Imogen could be described as typical. Are you afraid of a woman in trousers? Now that's typical of men. I don't know what this means. Look what I found. A box full of darts. Hey, that's mine. I confiscated it. These darts appear to be filled with something. Poison? How powerful is it? It's strychnine. Enough to instantly kill a small rodent. I haven't tried it on a human... yet. I hope you know what you're doing. Could it immobilize a larger animal, say, an elephant? I've never tried, but I have wondered. Between yachts, darts, and notes from bandits, I've discovered many fascinating facts about you. But this, an installment of Nabe and Laura's adventures, why did you sully your library with this? It's a gift from Imogen. I didn't buy it. 
I might have turned a couple of pages, but nothing more. I swear. I will give you the benefit of the doubt, but your literary taste has put you on my blacklist. A charming picture. I've heard that champions do often pose with their trophies. Cheeky. It is a lovely trophy, though. I'm sure you will agree. What is it that you like most about her? Her naivety? Her father's money? A somewhat difficult choice. Especially now that her father is out of the equation. I'm clueless. Imogen doesn't strike me as an industrious young lady, so I find it strange that she was busy packing up all her belongings when Mr. Gildon died. That's some um, favorable wind in your sails, isn't it? Is it so suspicious that a couple might embark on a trip? I wanted to thank her, so we planned to go traveling. A Theodore-free place, without elephants. The timing of it is suspicious, however. Your lady friend becomes an orphan and heir, and there's a planned trip directly afterwards. An improvised romantic dinner will never please a spoiled girl. A planned voyage might. It's not spur of the moment. Does this knife seem familiar? I didn't find it in your competitor's back, to be clear. This knife is as blunt as your humor. It's a boson's knife, but it's not mine. I wouldn't be so careless as to mislay my tools. A. Swift. Are you familiar with this name? The gentleman had business with Mr. Gildon. Likely just another strange and wrinkled fellow like old Gildon was. Perhaps this Swift person has a rhino, and they wanted to see which pet was stronger. In other words, I don't know who he is, but I bet he's crazy like Theodore. I doubt that Cortona has ever boasted a battle arena for that size of mammal. You have an interesting imagination. What can you tell me about the elephant? He's smarter than some people here, including his owner. Although I feel he could be dangerous, no matter how much he's fed. Why is that? Have you ever seen Goliath attack anyone? Well, not exactly. But I saw it, uh, abusing some poor tree during one of its walks with Theodore. The expression on that old ninny's face was priceless. But it wasn't funny to look at. Believe me, it was frightening. Does it look remotely familiar to you? Should it? Concentrate, Sherry. Are you lost, sir? Not at all. I'm right where I need to be. I'm Sherlock Holmes, by the way. Ursula Oni, 
the chief archivist. How can I help you exactly? I need to take a look at the history of Cordona and its islanders to retrieve some, hopefully, useful information. Your brother Mycroft told me that you were direct, and now that we've met, I can see that is true. Someone in our family has to balance the evasive nature of my brother. Well, may I use the city archives? You may, of course. But in return, perhaps dinner? That's a high price to pay for looking at your archives. <laughs> I was teasing you. Pay no attention to me. I'll be right here. With your love for archives, you would have made the perfect bureaucrat. From day to night, I don't stand. From day to night, The Market Square, beating heart of the old city. I wonder if they still saw that heavenly Turkish light around the corner.
Don't come. miss out on my Decorate unique your house in North Maraba. It's a good day for a purchase. Don't hurry, we can bargain. Let's pick something that suits you. A good choice. A good choice indeed. Nice affordable clothes. Step right up. Sir, kind sir, might I steal your attention? I am not buying. Ah, that is the thing. You won't waste a single mangir. I am a digger, you see, and I have heard of a dig site so deep it clogs your ears. I want to be there. Why are you telling me this? I have heard of a man recruiting for such a dig. A man with a scar, such as uh, the one that you're hiding. And your boots are dirty with the deep clay I am so familiar with. Oh, I, I hope it wasn't too rude of me to point that out. You have a good eye. And you just want to dig? Dig deep and that's it? What's the catch? Are you in desperate need of money? Oh, there is no catch, sir. I won't even ask for advance pay. Just give me a shovel and I'll dig a hole like you've never seen. Huh. Is that so? Well, I have to ask you an important question first. Would you be fine working for Brits? I am all for them. Well, you say that, but can you prove it? I'll sing you a very special song. God save our gracious queen. Cut it! Or people here will make you their queen. I can also speak in limericks. Please don't. You might be a little bit weak in the head, but a natural bone digger with a keen eye is what we need. Take this permission slip and go to this address. The guard will let you in and check with the professor once you're there. Stop loitering and get inside. Newcomer, talk to the professor first. He's the old fellow with the glasses and the plans. May I ask for your assistance? You and I are the economic foundation of this island. We should help each other. But I don't know what you are talking about. Where's the fire in your eyes? Where's the smile? I am sick and tired of seeing apathy among the new workers. Sir, believe me, I do have this part. I want to start work straight away. It's as important to me as it is to you. Ah, that's the spirit. I'm on the verge of a great discovery. Uh, when was the last time you saw... Young man, you're disappointing me. 
I'd like to see a bright career for you as the best digger on the island. Don't ruin it. We'll talk when you find something useful. Ah, uh, how did you meet me? Ah, uh, ah, uh, don't ask questions. You'll have to find the answers yourself. I'm not a nanny. I'm a busy man who is changing the course of history. I am ready to work. Splendid. Do you know what I am working on? The ivory bats. Everyone is looking forward to the grand opening. Who told you this nonsense? Why would you contaminate history with this base desire for leisure? Ah. We are looking for Vitus Lemonius' tomb. This is our goal, to find the artifacts of the early Roman Empire. Let's continue. I am Professor Swift. We have three rules here. Don't touch anything. Always return the tools, and don't distract me unless you find something. Sounds simple enough. Are you the only one in charge here, Mr. Swift? Yes, I am the only one, and no one else. You hear anything other than that, it's a lie. People of your kind can have difficulty understanding who's in charge. Take a minute, memorize my face, and then get to work. Oh, I will definitely take a closer look to memorize my superior. I bet that tomb is worth a lot of money. Are you not here for that? See, young man, how quickly you get distracted by the promise of treasure. You cannot appreciate the importance of my work. But you clearly have little or no money. Old clothes, untended wounds, you have no one beside you. That's the price of discovery. I have to surround myself with fools like you who wish only to feed their stomachs instead of their brains. I was just asking. It is uh, my curiosity. I cannot control it uh, sometimes. Uh, don't let me go, sir. If you'll just stop asking stupid questions, I won't have to fire you. So get to work! And you better find something useful. Don't touch anything here. Get back to work. Plan for this whole operation. This might prove useful. I'll note it down. This reminds me of my father's room.
Oil cloth. Won't fade and waterproof. Enough here to make ten sails and more. Straw dolls. Eerie, but effective for a scene recreation. Oh, I want one of these. Or two. Ah, let me warm my bones here. Sharpest pickaxe. <laughs> A guilty pleasure of the real archaeologist. Missing your Laura, Mr. Swift? Hey, a word about the trilogy. Right then, you literary expert. You, what was so important about these books? Or do you simply need some kindling? It's inspirational. I have a plan. Are you listening? I wish I wasn't, but I am. So, we catch a monkey. A langa, for example. Then we extract some blood from it. What? Why? It will make us forever young, Sherry. Page 127 of the second book. Oh, I am so done with this. No, wait. Then how about we make a wax statue? I've stopped listening, John. Romans live in amphoras. I see nothing else here. Somehow the text remains legible. Let's see if I remember my Latin. Sickle for harvesting. The ancient Romans honored the seasons. The goddess? A mother. Someone's wife. There were four statues here originally. I wonder what the three other statues look like.
Swift lost his temper when he learned what happened to the statue. Swift lost his temper. I see now. Mr. Swift didn't realize the significance of the statues. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. Seems everything's in place. Now, let's see what this has to tell us. Here is your discovery, Mr. Swift. Hey, look at this! 
What have you found? Don't let anyone touch anything there. Eureka! I found you, my friend! Box of darts. Handy against rodents of all kinds. Trying to take over my research, are you? I come here to pick up my diary and I find you snooping around. Explain yourself. Mr. Swift, if that were true, I would have been on my way to the newspaper. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I didn't have a chance to introduce myself properly. Outrageous! You deceived me, sir. What is the reason for your being here? Who sent you, Mr. Holmes? Theodore Gildon's premature death brought me here. Theodore is dead? How can that be possible? I'm thinking of all the possibilities, and I'm not crossing out anyone who might have been involved. Even his elephant. The land you're excavating belongs to Mr. Gildon, does it not? Did I hear an accusation? I have nothing to hide. You can ask me whatever nonsense you've prepared as a token of my diminishing respect towards you. Very well, Mr. Swift. I appreciate your cooperation. When was the last time you saw Mr. Gildon? A couple of days ago. We discussed the site. I believe in the tomb and its secrets. Theodore's patience was stretched, however. He was already inventing new projects. It wasn't a long conversation. I suppose that his daughter will inherit everything now, along with all of the eccentricities and problems. And not forgetting Goliath. Eccentricities and problems, Mr. Holmes. One of many. Were you at the site this morning? Affirmative. This project is taking a lot of my time, as you see. I spend more time underground than on the surface. When did you learn about Theodore's death? Just now. You just told me. And you aren't surprised, shocked. I won't tell anyone if you shed a tear or two. Weren't you partners, after all? We were. And it is a real shame. But I've seen too many deaths in my life, Mr. Holmes, for the news to truly shake me. Will you allow me to return to my research? Or are you insisting on remaining an obstacle? Oh, I haven't even started yet. You have a weakness for nostalgia? Or, rather, do you use it to record a list of enemies? Young man, you need to check your moral compass. Reading another person's diary is a sin in every culture that I can think of. But you aren't answering the question. You've already read it. Why bother? I simply record my life to keep my memory clean from misinterpretation. Letters and pages don't lie. But the writer of the text can. What's with this box of darts? Is it for a scientific argument? A little darker than that. Rather for killing the kind of rodents that might nibble a nose or a toe in your sleep. Let's just say I have to protect myself against a larger animal. Such as an elephant. Might it be enough to stop it, make it faint? If I were you, I wouldn't bank on it. With this book, you attempted to plan an attack on the elephant? Your insinuations are out of place. Goliath is a frightening animal. 
All I wished to do was to understand the creature. As any scientist would do, I researched, analyzed, and drew conclusions. Hmm. And what conclusion did you draw? That Theodore Gilden made the animal miserable. He couldn't provide the proper environment for the beast. My interest in the subject ended there. I'm a busy man. Moving on. What's with this intricate recruitment process? Pro-British workers charge less? As a head of this organization, I need to secure a productive environment. It's impossible to do so if there are political differences. Especially here, where the native population doesn't support our efforts to find the ancient artifacts. Decent pay can also stimulate productivity and shut down any political discord. Hadn't you thought of that? You're young. You have time to fritter and fight with everyone you meet. I don't have such a luxury. Our workers receive enough pay for what they do. So don't start a discussion you know nothing about. Moving on. I'm a busy man. Gildan's Elephant is quite an unusual addition to Cordona's fauna. What is your scientific opinion on that? No matter how much Theodore loved it, it still remained a wild animal trapped inside a stone pen. Goliath needs savannas, fields, lakes. I'm sure that Goliath did not have a plan to kill his owner to head to the savannas. What do you think? No. Animals don't kill in a typical sense. I can only presume that it tried to protect itself from captivity, from Theodore. It was a gilded cage that was predestined to break. Remember one of the rules? It uh, seems that you didn't return a tool. Is this knife yours? Do I look like a fellow who carries a knife? I don't need it. There are plenty of uses for it on the site, and outside of it. I have other people to cut ropes for me, Mr. Holmes. I've nothing to add. I'm a busy man. Your partner had a very specific attitude towards the things he treasured. Was this habitual for him? That would have been too much even for him. Don't get me wrong, he had a harsh temper. Like a true businessman, he was ready to burn his competitors to the ground. But threatening someone physically would have been something new even for him, am I correct? Absolutely. Besides, I had never seen him this angry. The fellow who received the letter must have been extremely alarmed. Moving on. Have you seen this person before? The one beside Imogen Gildan? No, but he's with Imogen, so I suppose that he's a friend of hers. That girl always has her head in the clouds. I could have said Theodore was different, but that wouldn't have been entirely true. Away with the fairies, was he? That's one way of putting it. Either way, I don't know much about Imogen's life or her friends. The type of elite that pretends to be educated. Did this plan cause a rift in your business relationship with Theodore Gilden? Nothing like that. Admittedly, we didn't share a common vision of what is more important, the past or the future. In my opinion, we can't build a future without knowing the past. So you wanted to save the tomb of Vitus here, or perhaps your control over the research? Only the knowledge that rightly belongs to humankind, nothing less and nothing more. I'm a busy man. Moving on. I've nothing to add. I'm a busy man. Moving on. As far as I can tell, you're a man of the academic world, so this book about Nabe and Laura is just an empirical study? What? That nonsense? I'd prefer to lose my eyesight than read such trash. So you know nothing about it? I know nothing. I wish I'd never heard of it in the first place, this caricature of science. Do I hear traces of envy? You're still relatively young that you might find your own, Laura. Perhaps I envy, Nabe, for I cannot simply blow people up for distracting me. That's all. You happy now? 
Wonderful. This fabric will work. 